praise the Lord. Back to Revelation chapter 2 this morning. We were out on Friday. Normally go out on Saturday, but uh, we were out on Friday. Got some gospel uh, spread and uh, invitations uh, out there to pray over. And uh, we we were able to get the order for the next 5,000 gospel mailers. And that's gone to print. And uh, so we should already be praying that God is preparing hearts. He already knows who will be receiving those. Thankful Brother Michael Simmons is, uh, is uh, back up and, and running uh, to do that and to help us with that. And, uh, you know, so lots to pray about. Revelation chapter 2 this morning, and, uh, and then uh, verse number 7. Verse number 7. So pick it up there. And uh, so what we're looking at, uh, this question, what is the tree of life all about? What does the tree of life mean? And so I'll read verse number 7 of Revelation chapter number 2. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit hath or saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. That's profound. I think that is just awesome. So let's go back to the book of beginnings from which all of these uh, Bible uh, doctrines do emanate from, are grounded, rooted in the book of beginnings Genesis chapter number three, and uh, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, for a government to to weld shut the doors of its uh, citizens in in these uh, multi-family housing units. But not just only in multi-family housing units, high-rise apartments, but wherever people who are um, ill with this particular virus, yeah, it's like, what do they know that compels them to do that to their people? So, good morning, good morning, come right on in. Uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter number two. Genesis 2. We're going to look in Genesis chapter 3 and, and on, but um, we've got and uh, we've got some folks that are testing positive for this virus, and uh, and so um, it it would appear that it's uh, very contagious and uh, and and can be uh, a real challenge to be read of so we're praying and asking God to help these folks all right uh, all right Genesis uh, chapter 2 and just just quick kind of a review here Genesis chapter 2 and uh, verse number 9 and don't worry my peripheral is working I can see you folks over there so don't <laughs> Don't feel left out, you know. Never feel left out. I've got good peripheral here. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Genesis chapter two, and then, um, and then, and then verse number nine. So we'll pick it up in verse number nine. We're going back to uh, creation here, uh, <clears throat> the beginning, you might say. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree, every tree, mind you, that is pleasant 
to the site. You know, and I said before, but often we'll find ourselves looking at the foliage on a tree or, you know, um, something about the tree and we'll, we'll just remark or we'll comment you know, we'll say, well, that's beautiful. Um, this all goes back to the book of beginnings. <laughs> uh, every tree that is pleasant to the sight, it's aesthetically pleasing. We like it. I saw some trees yesterday that uh, had uh, red and, uh, and, and yellow leaves. And, uh, you know, Caught myself doing this very thing. I said to my wife, I said, you know, look at that. Isn't that, you know, isn't that pretty? Those those leaves and those bright, vibrant colors. And I mean, who did that? God. Why? For your pleasure. Um, but not just aesthetically pleasing, but also and good for food good for food the uh, that crisp delicious sweet apple good for food uh, the word of God tells us but then he uh, draws our attention to one tree in particular uh, the tree of life also, so beyond all of the aesthetically pleasing and all of the uh, life-sustaining, nutritional, you know, good for you, um, fruit, um, produce, the the tree of life, also, which here God distinguishes. It's He's handling this tree separate and apart. Uh, distinct from all of the other trees, but uh, you know, wanting us to give careful and special attention to this, um, and also in the midst. I mean, in the middle of there it is. Um, the garden, in the midst of the garden. Paradise, the Garden of Eden. Um, God put that tree. And so that is distinguished in that it holds a place of prominence among, in the midst of all the other trees in the in this uh, garden of paradise or garden of eden so this you, you know we would say is a exceedingly special tree um, and he goes on to say uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil wow Now, let's continue on. Let's back, drop down to verse uh, 16. And we'll look at verse 17. Wish we had time to look at it all. <laughs> and the Lord God commanded the man, was saying, of how many trees, class? Every tree of the garden thou mayest eat. Thou mayest freely eat. But, verse 17 goes on to say, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. So they're permitted by God to eat of the fruit of all 
all of the trees of the garden with the exception of just one tree. One tree God withholds from Adam and Eve. It says, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt, and the Bible says, surely. There's no ifs, ands, maybes, buts about this. <laughs> thou shalt surely die. Now that's interesting. You have a tree of life. And on the flip side of that, you have a tree of what? A tree of death. You have both. You have a tree of life. But you have a tree of death. And you have a commandment. You have a commandment. But God leaves them beyond the commandment, beyond placing the tree of life and the tree of death, or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Beyond that and beyond the commandment that God gives, God leaves them with a what? They are left with a what? With what? A choice. And, you know, the theologians term it free moral agency, but really it's a choice. choice and what a commentary on God's plan some would say God's arrangement what a commentary that is God leaves us with a choice and why did God do that why did God leave us with a choice I mean if there were no choice, if there were no choice, if God had not left us with, you know, free moral agency, but, but, I mean, you know, and, or, had not even left the possibility of accessing the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, um, then what would the outcome have been in that scenario? No access to the tree of death or the tree, you know, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No access, can't get to it, can't, can't eat of that fruit of that tree. So, so then worship of God is a result of the choice, the freedom that we make. Okay, and so could we say then that's important to God, that we have the freedom of choice? Why? Why is us having the freedom of, choice, freedom of choice. Why is that so important to God? You say it's important to God. Yeah, obviously, he left us with a choice, so we're not forced, but why did he do that? Because so we could love him. So we could love him. So we could love him. And I agree entirely with that because that brings us back to the first and greatest commandment that God has issued to all of mankind, which is love me. And if, it's, if, if it doesn't involve a choice, it's not love. It's, it's yeah, it's all, it's, uh, it's what God most desires is, is to be loved. And that's all about choice. That's all about choice and choices and 
Wow. So they made their choice. They made their choice. Now, we, we go to um, Genesis chapter 3. We see the consequence, right? Choices. Choices all have consequences. You might not meet with the consequences of a choice necessarily the same day you make the choice. The consequences might not come home to roost for, well, you just never know when they're good, but they will come. <laughs> they will. Sooner or later, the, the consequences will. They will show up. About all the choices that we make, someone said, choose wisely, choose well. Um, Genesis chapter 3, and uh, so we'll just drop down to verse number 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. And God tells us in what way to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life which remember they had been permitted by God to do they were doing they had been partaking of the fruit of the tree of life they were allowed by God to do that. Lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat. And do what, class? So what do we learn from God then as it pertains about life and the tree of life? It is the partaking of the fruit of the tree of life that results in what? Eternal life. Eternal life. Huh. Isn't that interesting? See? It's like, what is it about this tree of life that is in the center of the Garden of Eden. What is it about that tree? See, so eternal life is predicated upon this fruit from partaking of this fruit from this tree that is in the center of the garden, which they had been doing. They had. They, they were permitted. They were allowed by God. The only fruit they were not permitted to eat was which they disobeyed sinned they did eat and was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil well that's ancient that's ancient history that's do you know what it's ancient future. It's ancient future, too. We're going to look at that. Well, you know, that's, that's done. That's over with. No. No, it's not. No, we're not done with the tree of life. Oh, no. Not at all. But however, at this time... We, uh, at this time, we have no access to the, the fruit of the tree of life. Well, you talk like we're going to meet with the fruit of the tree of life again. Yeah, the Bible does say that. <laughs> the, tr the fruit of the tree of life, the tree of life is very much a part of God's plan for our eternity. It's find the tree of life at the beginning but we're also going to see the tree of life 
Um, as we arrive at paradise restored, you know, the, always this tree of life, always, always this tree of life. There's something about this tree of life that compelled God to put it in the center of paradise. It's got center stage in humanity, in the life of mankind. It's, it's at the very center of it. Now, um, now we you know, go to uh, verse 23 of uh, Genesis chapter 3 and, and verse number 24. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Some would call that farming. You know, uh, you work, uh, you know, till the ground, you plant the seed, you, you know, harvest, you, you eat. Um, but then in verse number 24, and we taught, we touched on this uh, last Sunday. So he, so he drove, and the, the Hebrew word is the word garash. We say drove. God drove out the man. So it means to... It means to literally, physically cast Adam out, but it means to drive away, which means Adam was unwilling. In now in a fallen state, isn't, isn't this something? Look at this. It just speaks volumes upon rebellious mankind. In a, in a in a post in a, in a post fallen state, Adam is unwilling to do what God now commands him and wills for him to do, which is leave the garden. God literally has to drive him out. This is the state of fallen mankind with regard to the commands of God, the will of God. I don't want to do it. And isn't it interesting how all of us from time to time meet with certain of God's commands that we just don't want to do. Now we know God wants us to do it, but we don't want to do it. And usually, why doesn't Adam want why doesn't Adam want to obey this command of God to leave the garden of Eden? Well, he doesn't want to, because somehow, some way, it's going to affect his, his life. And do you know that is, that is the principal reason for why most of us likewise do not want to obey. We're very select, we're very selective about the commands of God that we're okay with obeying, but we're also... We know God's commands that we don't want to obey. And it's the same reason Adam didn't want to obey, because it's, it's going to adversely affect, it's going to, it's, it's not the way Adam wants to live. I don't want to do what you want me to do, God, because... That's going to put me out of my comfort zone. It's going to affect my security, my safety, my, uh, you know, a host of reasons. It's, it's going to affect my lifestyle. It's, it's just not what I like to do, you know. And so we, 
even as believers, as Christians, we still have the Adamic nature, or other, we would say the fallen nature, the sin nature, the old man. We've got him. He, he's within all of us. But we also uh, have the new man. We have the new nature uh, in Christ Jesus uh, by his spirit indwelling us as uh, children of God. And so the two war, oh, they war against one another. The, the new man, the old man in this constant battle. And so... Having fallen and in full possession of the sin nature, spirit of rebellion, God says go, Adam says no. <laughs> See, verse 23, therefore the Lord God sent him forth, go. And in verse 24, God steps, God amps it up, steps it up. So he drove out. He, he had to drive him away. It, it means, and in this word, uh, this Hebrew word, gahrash, in the, it, it, everything that is packed into the definition of this Hebrew word, it means to thrust away. And listen to this. To be tossed out. To be tossed out. <laughs> I mean, get the picture from the Word of God. This was an epic struggle. And there's another important lesson that we should learn about the will of God as it concerns our life. And here's the important lesson you can fight God. But can you win? Adam was fighting the will of God. This was God's will. Leave the garden. Adam said, no. No, I'm not going to leave the garden. So Adam digs in, plants his feet. And who won that epic struggle? God won. I wonder, does God still win today? In these battles of the will? When a man or a woman... Um, now, you know, well, now, please understand, you see, you're taking this out of context... Adam and Eve aren't even saved when this is happening. They're lost. No, no, they're not. No, God saved them. Let me, let me take you back uh, to uh, verse 21. Uh, no, this is all happening. See, they, they fell, but they were redeemed. They were saved. <laughs> you know, see, this epic battle of the wills is not between God and an unsaved man. No, this is between God and his child. Look at verse 22. Unto Adam also and to his wife, Eve, did the Lord God make coats of skins. And what did God do with those coats of skin? Now, these are animal skins. So for the animal skins, for he did what? He clothed them. Now for that to happen, for animal skins to be placed on and around Adam and Eve, what do we know must have happened to the animals? They were slaughtered. And um, it's the blood. It's always the blood. This is, these are 
lambs <laughs> slaughtered. The sins of Adam and Eve are now covered, covered, key word is covered, and every year, every year, the issue of that sin is rolled back another year. It's rolled back, and every year, and God would incorporate all of this into an annual sacrifice that would be accomplished at length in the tabernacle in the wilderness and then in the temple of God. And, and, and so the sins of the nation, uh, the, the sins of God's people would be rolled back, rolled back, covered, covered, covered by the blood of the sacrificial animals until one day, about 2,000 years ago, the Lamb of God would come and shed his blood. Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And when the blood of Jesus Christ was shed, that's when, that's when uh, sins uh, were no longer pushed back, pushed back, covered, covered for another year. Um, that's when Sin was completely forgiven, forgotten, cleansed, washed away, gone. It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, um, now, see, this battle of the wills is between God and one of his children. God said, leave the garden and Adam quite literally by his behavior said no now explain to me why and maybe you've already answered I have a short minute why did God did uh, Adam say to God no what well, had to cultivate <laughs> he had to call he did have to cultivate I like gardening. I don't know about you. I would you would you believe it if I were to tell you I'm still harvesting tomatoes out of my garden? <laughs> it's just a, wonderful, you know. My wife makes a salad. There's the cherry tomatoes, and then there's the early girls, and we've got the beef steaks, and we can you believe that? Only in Las Vegas, Nevada, do you get to go out to your garden and pick tomatoes. I mean, I got tomato plants still green and growing and tomatoes on them and I I'm glad said cultivate I'm glad you know yeah, I'm glad for that I, I think that's why I'm like I am because it all goes back to Genesis <clears throat> God said go Adam said no there's a lot of things God says to us do and we say no And that's because we've got Adam in us. We get the old man in us. Yeah. But we would be well advised to learn from this great eternal truth. It it just didn't work out for Adam to, to you know say no to God. It just didn't work out for Adam to disobey God. And you know, I'm thinking it probably won't work out for any of God's children still today to look in the face of God in the face of a command of God and say, no, no. I don't want to do it because that doesn't fit where I want to be in my life. It, it... No, God, no. That, you know, um, that doesn't work for me because it's not what I want to do. Uh, it's, you know, God, it's for me to obey your command it, it, it's not a part of my the plan for my life. See, God, see, God's commanding Adam to get to leave the garden. See, this word garage drove out 
the man. It means to expel, to cast out, to drive away. And get this, do you know what else? Here's an, it means to divorce. It, it, to put away, to thrust away, to be tossed. You know, what did Adam see? See, Adam made the choice to disobey God. Now the consequences, um, now the consequences have arrived. The, the consequences have come home to Adam, and he doesn't like them. He doesn't like the consequence of the choice, the decision he's, he has made. Uh, you know, look, at what point does a child of God say, you know what? The last time I disobeyed God, it just really didn't work out that well for me. It might be a good idea to start listening to God and doing what he says. I mean, what point does a child of God say, I better wise up and start listening to my God? Now, I don't like what he's telling me to do. He's telling me to get out of the garden. So I'm going to fight him on this. Adam literally (laughs) digs in, plants his feet. I'm not leaving this garden. I'm not leaving it. Now, my question, class, is, What do you think Adam's compelling reason was for not wanting to leave the garden? Tree of life. So what then is the consequence that that has arrived for Adam that he doesn't want to face, he doesn't want to meet with? It's death. You know, do you know the world has a lot, do you know the world still has a, it's not the tree of life, but are you aware the world still has a tree of life? It's the world's tree of life. But do you know the world's tree of life is an imitation and can never do, cannot do what God's tree of life, what only God's tree of life can do? You know, and the world's tree of life is packaged you know, with many different labels and forms. But at the very best, the world's tree of life, with regard to the lifespan of a person, can only do what at at the very best? Maybe prolong the inevitable? We say prolong the inevitable? And what is the inevitable? It's death. I mean, do you realize... Do you realize... See, we're no different than Adam. We want to live. We want to live. And we're grasping. The world is grasping at all of these trees of life or at the tree of life of the world. But the very best outcome from that tree the world's tree of life is, is just to prolong the inevitable. Um, Now, that tree of life of the world comes in many different shapes and forms. Um, It's couched in the world of medicine, uh, medical, uh, uh, you know, um, if, if you'll, uh, if you'll um, change your diet, diet, diet habits, if you'll, if you'll uh, you know, become involved in exercise. Um, uh, and just a host, even religions, just a host of other products. Can I say that word? Products. Um, 
you're going to enjoy, what, what's uh, the catchphrase, a better quality of life? Well, that's fine, you know. I mean, you know, the Bible says exercise profiteth a little, but spiritual exercise is profiteth profitable with all. And so, yes, yes, yeah, the Word of God. Uh, exercise, according to God, will profit you for the duration of your life here upon the earth. That's what it means, a little. It means, it means for all of the years that you're on the earth, exercise will profit your physical body. It'll help you. But only spiritual exercise will profit you for eternity, which brings us to another truth, and that's back to God's tree of life. You know, see, I just think it's, it's remarkable to me. Boy, when you, when you look at the Word of God and you get the Word picture, and as God illustrates, and you see this epic battle, you know, who, what's another man that wrestled with God? Uh, one of Abraham's ancestors, they had literal wrestling match with God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, was it Jacob? Jacob fought with God. And, you know, God displaced his, uh, displaced his uh, hip, and for the rest of his life, he walked with a limp. Now, that's a whole nother story there, but, but it's not the first wrestling match between a man and God. I mean... And uh, so he drove out the man. And, and, he, and uh, by the way, most people believe that Adam was, was created from the dust contained within the Garden of Eden. Re read the Genesis account. Read the Genesis account, you know. Most people believe that <laughs> they were created in the Garden. You know, they, they were created and God put them in the Garden after they were after creation it's interesting to me so drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of eden cherubims angels and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the word keep means to guard the way, the point of access to the tree of life. How amazing this all is to me anyway. It just really is. Wow. Now, we talked about this last Sunday. Uh, before God created, before God made Adam from the dust of the, of the earth, what did God know? What did God know? Anybody? Before he ever made Adam. Did, did God see this in advance of? <laughs> you know, and yet we learned. Knowing all of this, he proceeded with to make Adam. And so I think what we'll do, because right now, all I could do right now would, would be to um, get something started I cannot even possibly finish, and I don't want to do that. So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll close with a word of prayer, and then, um, and then next uh, time we meet, if we get to meet again, um, I, I really want to uh, train the spotlight on this tree of life, but you know, I, I think, for me, for me, 
I'm talking about me and what I got from God's word during this class is how important it is when God declares his will to me as his child, I would be best served and well advised to obey. Now, and I think we all, I think every child of God would be uh, best served to obey God's revealed will. When God, when God says go, I'd better go. And not be saying no, no, I don't want to go, no. Um, whatever the case may be, whatever, whatever aspect of the life as a child of God may be, when God says, obey me, I, I have, from all of this, I had better, my takeaway from this is, I had better obey God. And knowing Jesus Christ makes it possible for me to obey God, because I now have, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God makes it possible for me to obey him. And uh, had Adam been able to get back to that tree of life, well, let, let me say this. We've got a brother right now. Uh, who's asking his church family to pray for his very, very, very uh, ill mother. <clears throat> and so we're going to pray for the Dobbins family. But, um, you know, I, th I think about my own mother. <clears throat> um, had Adam been able to get back to that tree of life in his post fallen state um, his body then would have been enabled by the fruit from that tree of life to lived to go on living in an eternal state of sickness pain suffering Ah, uh, and God knew that. And that's not what God wanted. God closed off the point of access to that tree of life and so that Adam's body would eventually succumb. And... Of course, what is God's plan as it concerns our physical bodies, those of us that know Christ? To be changed in the twinkling of an eye to this body of sickness, of suffering, of pain. It's going to be uh, changed and we are going to be given a glorified body that will never know any kind of sickness, suffering, pain. That's God's plan. But we'll look at all of that in more in depth um, next time we meet together. There is a next time. I'm looking for the return of my Savior any moment. Yeah. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. That'd be just fine with me. Amen. But until then, um, we, we, we'd, we'd better not be telling God no when God says go. Father, uh, Lord, we, um, I mean, I'm excited about the, the uh, study here and the, the truth and 
And it's not just about what happened to Adam. It's when he disobeyed you. It's about what happens to all of us still today when we disobey you. And meeting with those consequences. And yet, and yet, you never stop loving us. You never stop caring about us. You never stop wanting to help us, um, to deliver us, to save us. Uh, your love is unconditional. And we're so thankful to you for that, Lord. And thankful that one day we will be delivered from these bodies. But even now, we're still, and even now, there is a tree of life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, there's a tree of life right now. But just as it was in Adam's day, so it is now. And so it will be um, until paradise is restored. We're not allowed to get to that tree of life. Um, and so that these sick bodies... Uh, pain, suffering. Uh, no, no, these bodies can't get to that tree of life right now, but we'll look about all that, Lord. And, and I'm sure as we look more about it, we'll be saying thank you, God, that we can't get to that tree of life right now. But we're going to, uh, Lord, really focus in on that tree. That tree. What, what is it about that tree that would be the reason you put it in the midst of the Garden of, of Paradise? There's something about that tree. God, help us with all. Help us in the service uh, just ahead, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.